In this lecture we start a completely new topic, matrix algebra. It belongs to a branch of maths called linear algebra because it deals with systems of linear equations. We get to the linear equations in the next lecture. In this lecture, in module 1, we start with the basics. First, the definitions and notations we'll need, and then matrix addition. In module 2, we'll mainly focus on matrix multiplication, but we'll also cover the transpose of matrices. In Module 3, we'll look briefly at a subclass of matrices, vectors. What is a matrix? Well, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. This is an array. An array is just an arrangement of some kind. We signify it's a matrix when we put some brackets around it, either square brackets or parentheses. Generally, we use a bold uppercase letter for a matrix. So here we have D, B and C. However, if we're handwriting, there's no need to make it bold. A matrix is made up of elements. So each of the numbers we can see in these three matrices is an element. An important feature of a matrix is its dimension. The dimension is specified in terms of the rows and columns of the matrix. We always specify the rows first, then the columns. In general, M rows and columns. Matrix F here has three rows and two columns. Going back, matrix D is a 4x4 four four matrix. B has two rows and four columns, so it's a 2x4. And C, again, has two rows but three columns. It's a 2x3. When we have a constant, either as a number or as a letter, we call it a scalar. That's also what we call one element of a matrix. A vector is a particular type of matrix which has only one row or one column. We'll discuss vectors in more detail in Module 3. As we've seen, the elements of a matrix are numbers. Often we represent these numbers by letters. If we have a small matrix, we can use different letters for each element, for example here. But for larger matrices, we mostly use the same letter with a pair of subscripts to indicate the element. These subscripts are most frequently labelled as I and J. And once again, the order is important. Rows first, columns second. Usually I indicates the rows and J the columns. So here we have the general form, element I, J in a 2 by 3. Element 1, 2 is in row 1 column 2. Element 2, 3 is in row 2, column 3. Later we'll be focusing on solving systems of equations and we'll frequently come across a particular type of matrix, that is, the square matrix. This is simply when the number of rows equals the number of columns. We'll see why a square matrix is associated with solving systems of equations in the next lecture. In a square matrix, we define the principal diagonal as the elements going from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. If the off-diagonal elements are all zero, as we have here, then we have a diagonal matrix. A special case of a diagonal matrix is where we have ones in the principal diagonal. This is the identity matrix. It acts like a one in scalar algebra. A very simple matrix is where all the elements are zero. That's a null matrix. If we think about pairs of matrices, for a pair of matrices to be equal, two things are required. The matrices must have the same dimensions and all the corresponding elements must be equal. So these two matrices are equal. These two aren't. They look similar, but the dimensions are different. This is a two by three and this is a three by two. We can add or subtract matrices as long as they have the same dimensions. In the case of additions, we simply add the corresponding elements. Here we have two matrices, A and B, both are two by three. To add them together, we add A11 elements. So we'll have three plus four, the A12 elements, and so on. And here we have the result. We define subtraction in terms of addition. Subtracting matrix B from matrix A is the same as multiplying matrix B by the scale at minus 1 and then adding. We have A minus B is equivalent to A plus 
minus 1 times b. We multiply each element in b by minus 1 and then add. Let's have a look at an example of matrix addition. We have a retailer who sells two products, Q and R, in two shops, A and B. So we have matrices that represent the sales of products Q and R over the last four weeks. Let's make sure we know how to interpret those. The matrices represent the shops. We have two products, Q and R. Those products are represented by the rows, so we'll have Q and R. And then we'll have the sales for each week. One, two, three, four for B, and one, two, three, four for A. Now we want to find total sales for each week by product. Due to that, we'll add matrices A and B. Recall what the columns and rows stand for. The columns represent the weeks and the rows represent the products. So for product Q, for example, we add the sales in the first week together. So it'll be 5 plus 8 and so on. We do that for all the corresponding elements and then we find our total sales. Next we'll go through the properties of scalar addition. We need to take care with matrices as some of the rules associated with them are different from scalar algebra. In the case of addition the properties are similar. We have the commutative property a plus B is equal to B plus A. The associative property A plus B plus C in brackets is equal to A plus B in brackets plus C. And if we add a null matrix to A, we end up with A. So we're adding zero to each of the elements. We'll finish this module on matrix notation and properties with scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is quite simple. Each element in the matrix is multiplied by the scalar. We start with matrix A and we multiply it by some scalar K. That means we just multiply each element in A by K, as we see here. Let's look at an example. A company has three retail outlets and four products and the sales revenue is represented in this matrix R. So the columns of the products and the rows are the outlets. We have the revenue and we know that the we have the revenue. We know that profit is 20% of the sales revenue. We want to find a matrix showing the profit on each product for each retail outlet. Well profit is 0.2 of revenue. So we multiply our revenue matrix by 0.2. That means we multiply each element in the revenue matrix by 0.2. And there's our solution. We have some properties of scalar multiplication. We have the distributive property. If we multiply the sum of two matrices, A plus B by K, that's equal to KA plus KB. If we have two scalars, K1 and K2, add them up and multiply matrix A by that combined factor, that's the same as K1A plus K2A. We have the associative property of multiplication. We could also put brackets around K1 and K2. So multiply those together first and multiply A. In the next rule, zero is a scalar. That just means if we multiply any matrix by the scalar zero, we end up with a null matrix. And finally, if we multiply a null matrix by K, we end up with a null matrix. The notation and rules that we've covered in this module are quite easy, but make sure you're on top of them before you go on.